I finally did it, gamers. I went out and bought myself a gamer shelf. Made of the finest particle board $80 can buy, the IKEA Kallax, also known as that one shelf everybody has, is the premier piece of background decor for the discerning Twitch tube gamer. If you want to make some real capital C content, then having one of these bad boys is arguably even more important than hanging up your play button on the wall. The Oboe Shoes Games gamer shelf came with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight empty sections. But today I'm decorating just the first Square, which is arguably the most important one because it can be seen even if a gamer chair is in front of it. Now, filling out an entire gamer shelf with meaningful items can be a lifelong endeavor. I should know because it took me my entire life to fill up this one. This gamer shelf, which is actually just a normal shelf, is sitting in my old room at my parents' house and has been there since before I was born. It has accumulated a wide and wacky assortment of objects reflecting my interests from early childhood all the way up until this very moment. And now that I have this gamer shelf, I can finally relocate these precious memories to a more suitable home. Except I am only going to fill in a single square today, so actually said precious memories will be competing in a ruthless nostalgia-fueled deathmatch to claim the very limited shelf space. I'm hoping this more personal approach to shelf decoration helps the Oboe Shoes Games gamer shelf stand out a bit from all the other gamer shelves out there. I mean, no offense to them, but I see a whole lot of shelves out there that are filled with expensive Legos and Funko Pops and I'm trying to take mine in a more unique direction. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at the first couple of items from my old shelf, which are expensive Legos and Funko Pops. This is the Force Awakens edition of the Lego Millennium Falcon, and this thing's a classic. You gotta love the Lego Millennium Falcon. Although, I kinda wanna take it apart and use the frame to build a mini trash falcon. So, like, favorite, subscribe if you know what a trash falcon is. Speaking of trash, here's Poe Dameron's X-Wing with no canopy and a lot of dust. I got this when it came out because I've always wanted a Lego X-Wing, and this is the first one I was able to buy. But I was never too crazy about the Halloween pumpkin color scheme, and then a few months later, they re released it with the normal colors, which just made me mad, because obviously that's the one you want. Other LEGO Star Wars on the shelf includes the Pod Racer, the 501st Walker, and whatever this thing is. I was gifted this set as a joke because it was on deep discount, and I'd said multiple times how terrible it was, but honestly, I kind of like it, because the yellow canopy is very Mission Deep Sea Alpha Team. There's got to be some LEGO Star Wars representation on the gamer shelf, and I think the funniest way to do that is to just have this one windshield piece by itself. So it's going on the shelf. It wouldn't be a gamer shelf without some Funko Pops. You will literally never be able to guess the circumstances under which I obtained some of these guys. Suffice to say, I didn't pay for a single one of them, and they do have some sentimental value. But the only Funko Pop you're ever going to find on my gamer shelf is a Gears Pop from my favorite game, Gears Pop. But sadly, I don't own any Gears Pop, so I guess my shelf will not be popping. Here's a thimble. For some reason, when I was a kid like seven years old I got really into thimbles for like a week like I really wanted to get a lot of thimbles there used to be more thimbles on the shelf actually I don't know where the rest of them went this is the only thimble that survived the great thimble purge I guess uh, I probably won't be putting it on the gamer shelf because it's just a thimble here's a Charmander I'm not really a big Pokemon guy so not really sure why that was on the shelf I also don't know why this stuffed gecko was on the shelf I mean he's kind of cute but I don't know where he came from and like who are these two cute Cube guys? Are they from like a movie or something? I don't know what these are either. Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Squirrel Annoyed Action Figure. Believe it or not, this was purchased in a Rite Aid. Revolutionary War Commemorative Plate. This plate goes so hard. This plate is so awesome. I was at one of my relatives one time. I don't even know which relative it was, but they had a whole set of these and they were going to throw one away. And I was like 10 and I said, Mom, you got to let me keep this plate. This plate is too awesome to get rid of. And so I have it to this very day. It's an amazing plate, but probably not going to put it on the gamer shelf, though, because it doesn't fit, which is a true national tragedy. I'm so sorry, Ben Franklin. Homestar Runner is my very favorite. I like it so much I named the channel after it. Look, I can make mine say Oboe Shoes. For that reason alone, I gotta have Strong Bad on the shelf, and if Strong Bad's there, Homestar's gotta be there. Buy all our play sets and toys. 
I did. The Hamburglar Beanie Baby, aka my retirement fund. Such a legendary character had to be honored in Beanie Baby form by being turned into a teddy bear with stripes. I guess that's the Hamburglar, sure. Here's an old antique car toy that is also secretly a pencil sharpener. I know, pretty cool, right? My great grandfather gave this to me, which I think is pretty neat. It is a bit too old timey for the hip modern vibe I'm going for on the gamer shelf though. Pez is a delicious candy and I always get a dispenser because the dispenser is like part of the fun. It tastes good, but the dispenser is fun. Don't just buy the bag of Pez by itself, that's lame. I belong in a landfill. GameStop power-up rewards exclusive Halo 4 Spartan action figure. The Halo 4 Spartans look terrible, but this one is exclusive to GameStop power rewards, which is why I've never unboxed it, because it's probably worth huge money. Ah! As much of a meme as the game became, I do gotta give a big shout out to Amogus for giving me and my friends something to do during quarantine. When I look at this plush Amogus, I think of bad times during a global pandemic. And if those memories aren't worth preserving on a gamer shelf, then I don't know what is. Here's two Obi-Wan Kenobi action figures. The one from Episode 2's lightsaber got snapped off, but his feet are magnets for some reason. If only they had a nice round circular base to stand on, like these guys have. I used to have a lot of them. They were pretty fun to mess around with. I don't know why Commander Bly is red, though. Commander Bly <laughs> We all know Commander Bly's not red, come on. Here's a bunch of little Star Wars vehicles, they're pretty cool. You gotta love the ad at. you gotta love the prequel ships, you don't gotta love this thing, What? what is this? You do gotta love the Star Wars Bionicles though. The CCBS shell system kinda sucks in my opinion, but it works really good for Stormtroopers and Stormtrooper adjacent guys. If you don't know what CCBS stands for, go subscribe to my LEGO channel, and if you do know what CCBS stands for, go subscribe to my LEGO channel. This Death Trooper is awesome, this red guy from Snoke is awesome, the classic Stormtrooper is awesome, the speeder bike, oh, the speeder bike, look at that thing. That is a thing of beauty right there. It might just be the best looking action figure sized vehicle that LEGO has ever done. I mean, Bionicle had a couple, but... Eh, you know, like, eh. Uh. You know I love Bionicles, but none of their vehicles can compete with the Galador egg. Overall, I do really like these guys, but again, shelf space in the first square is extremely limited, and I do already have a Seagird Bionicle, so I think he's gonna go there instead. A few years before LEGO collectible minifigure blind bags became a thing, LEGO released several sets of these, vintage minifigure collection boxes. This is the first box they put out, and it includes a Spaceman, a Fireman, a Octane Man, a Robber Man, and the weird doctor guy from 2002. I don't really know if anybody had nostalgia for him, and I guess LEGO agreed because in future production runs of this set, they replaced him. There was actually some controversy in the online LEGO community when this first came out because the Spaceman uses the new helmet mold instead of the classic helmet mold. Imagine actually being upset about that when there's real problems in the world, like how the new Jedi Bob figure isn't gonna have the right color of dark gray for the torso because the old dark gray color got retired like 20 years ago so now they have this reproduction that's not even close to faithful to the old version don't even get me started on old brown versus new brown we're wrapping up the lego talk with this big old pile of pieces there's a few cool small builds in there but this is all probably going to get disassembled and sorted i don't really have any strong attachment to any of this stuff as evidenced by the fact that it was in a giant pile i do however have a very strong attachment to this little King John golf ball. If you don't personally own at least one piece of official Rat Boy Genius merchandise, then what are you doing with your life? This thing's a no-brainer. It's absolutely going on the shelf. This machine creates potato conditions. Quick, what do these three characters have in common? That's right, they're all from Bethesda All-Stars Funko Mystery Boxes. I got three of those boxes for Christmas one year, and the box has Skyrim Guy, Skyrim Dragon, Fallout Guy, Dishonored Guy, but of course I get Elder Scrolls Online, Elf Lady, and Viking Man, and also this Cube Guy. What is this Cube Guy? What Bethesda property is this even from? I don't even know. Pacific Rim is the greatest movie ever made because there's a 
scene where a robot picks up a boat and uses it like a sword to hit a monster. To properly honor such a momentous piece of cinema history, I bought a Gypsy Danger action figure and a complete series of Pacific Rim hero clicks. It really is such a cool movie. All the monsters look awesome, all the robots look really awesome, GLaDOS from Portal is in there for like two seconds, there's occasionally some acting. It's just a shame that it never got a sequel. Speaking of GLaDOS, here's some collectible Portal turrets from a Portal turret blind box series they had back when Portal 2 came out. I think you'll agree these two are much better than the Bethesda figures, but they keep on shooting me out. Stop. If you've ever been taken out to the ball game, you might have seen ice cream being sold in novelty baseball helmets. That's how I got this one, and you can tell it's from a long time ago because this team doesn't exist anymore. I've always had beef with this logo because it's for the Montreal Expos, and this little symbol is supposed to be an M, but that is not an M. That says Elb. That's E-L-B-L, but -L -L, it's not M. What a disaster. I'm glad that team is Walgreens now. Burger King Ewok and the Burger King Chewbacca. These are pretty cute little guys. They're obviously not as good as a McDonald's Happy Meal Bionicle, but they're okay. Of course, no shelf is complete without a C-3PO trading card, an autographed picture of some guy from the Orioles, and a Dave Bergman baseball card. Gotta have Dave on there. What can I say? I just really like orange teams. They don't officially call this the Oboe Shoes hat on their website, but we all know what it is. These items are from the Dishonored 2 Super Duper Collectors Bundle, and these make me sad. Dishonored 1 is my favorite game ever, so when 2 came out, I took two days off of work to play it, ordered the Super Collectors Bundle, and then what did I get? I got a game that didn't run. My computer easily met the recommended specs, but that game just ran so bad on launch day. It kind of just ruined my whole experience with it. Like, don't get me wrong, it's still a really good game, but I like to say that Dishonored 2 is the best game ever that also sucks. Because it is good, it's better than like 99.9% .9 of other games, I would say, but also, it, it just sucks. I'm kind of making it sound like I hate Dishonored 2, but I don't hate it, I love it, it's a good game, I just hate it. Here's not just one, but two copies of Sean White snowboarding for the Xbox 360. The last time my brother asked me what I wanted for Christmas, I told him to get me any Xbox 360 game. And so, instead of just buying one online, he actually went to three different GameStops and asked them, do you have any Xbox 360 games? And the first two stores were like, no, what? We haven't had those in like eight years. But the third store he went to, the employee was like, I mean, I can check in the back, which is usually code word for I'm going to take a break on my phone. But after a few minutes, they actually came back out with two copies of Sean White snowboarding. So I like to think that these are among the last physical Xbox 360 games that a GameStop location has ever sold. I don't care if that's true or not, because I love believing it. The Xbox 360 is my favorite era of gaming, and there is truly no better way to represent it than with Sean White snowboarding snowboarding for the Xbox 360 for $4.99. I used to be a little bit of a Nintendo fanboy until I started posting videos on YouTube and they became my worst nightmare. Amiibos are fun though. I have most of the first wave here and these were all purchased pretty much the first week they came out because that was the only time it was viable to buy Amiibos in a store. After the initial stock ran out, every Amiibo just got scalped immediately for like two years. At least I got some good mileage out of these ones. Like I think I used the Smash 4 integration like two times in total. To me, the best thing about Amiibos is that my ancient Amiibos video was the first video I made that got more than like a hundred views by itself, so that was kind of cool. Speaking of videos getting views, here's a whole bunch of Borderlands stuff. For those of you who don't know, I'd been making internet videos since before YouTube was even a thing, but they never got that many views. Shout out to Ace Combat people. Ace Combat did get some views, but for the most part, I didn't get many views. Until one day, I made a Borderlands 1 story recap, and that video popped off, baby. After that happened, I started receiving a lot of Borderlands-themed gifts, some of which you see before you. Low-quality Borderlands 2 Lilith action figure does hold a special place in my heart, but an even more special place is filled by this still-sealed can of Tiny Tina's G Fuel sent to me by none other than Caffeine Man himself. So you know this can that symbolically represents Borderlands is going on the shelf. And with that, we've gone through every item that was on my old shelf. Only a select few made the cut for the gamer shelf. Let's take a look at what we wound up with. 
It's so beautiful, the way the Seagird Bionicle contrasts with the yellow windshield piece and the Little King John golf ball. It's just so magnificent. But this is just the beginning. I still have seven more squares to fill in in future videos. I'd like for each square to have its own specific theme. Like I'm thinking there could be a white run square, there could be a seventh gen shooter memorabilia square, gotta have a dolman square, you know, stuff like that. If you have a funny idea for a square, then let me know in the comments. Go subscribe to my Lego channel if that interests you, and be sure to tune in next time when I give you my top recommendations for arthritis gloves. <laughs>